Grand Canyon National Park has big plans when it comes to water. The National Park Service is preparing for a multi-year $208 million rehabilitation. The Grand Canyon stands as a breathtaking testament to the raw power of nature and the passage of time. Its breathtaking beauty and outstanding rock formations have helped to become one of the most iconic landscapes on the planet. However, when a renowned American journalist, Peter Ducey, dropped details about this world wonder, the archaeological world was confused. What did he discover? How has it affected the previous knowledge of the canyon? Let's find out. The canyon is a beautiful and enchanting creation that wows everyone who sees it. From its array of colors to its sheer size, being carved by the consistent power of the Colorado River about six million years ago. The canyon has had significant effects on its environment and is open to archaeologists and explorers to satisfy their curiosity and discover new things that help in dating and knowing the history and culture surrounding the region. The 277 miles long, 18.02 miles wide and 1.15 miles deep canyon has once again made the waves in the news and among archaeologists with the discoveries of a new set of writings, symbols and hieroglyphics carved on some of the canyon walls. These symbols are evidence of a previous and ancient civilization. It shows evidence of a people's way of life and how they might have evolved through the years. It is mainly believed that the erosion caused by the Colorado River has a significant impact on the canyon, but initially, the story of the canyon began with tectonic activity around 70 million years ago, during the late Cretaceous period. A series of uplift events occurred due to the movement of tectonic plates. Two plates from the Earth's crust collided and began to push up the Rocky Mountains, leading to the rising of the Four Corners region in the southwestern United States. This region, also known as the Colorado Plateau, rose from a bit close to the sea level to thousands of feet above sea level, and this uplift exposed layers of sedimentary rocks that had accumulated over hundreds of millions of years. Six million years ago, the Colorado River, sourced from torrents of water off the central Rocky Mountains in Colorado, began following its present course, flowing across the Colorado Plateau. As the river cut through the sedimentary rock layers, it gradually eroded the landscape and the river's cutting activity deepened the canyon. The river's continuous flow and the abrasive force of the large mud, sand and gravel sediments carried downstream acted like a giant chisel, cutting through the rocks at an astonishing capacity over millions of years. As the Colorado River eroded the landscape, it carved out the canyon's inner gorge, exposing more ancient rock layers. The rock layers discovered in the canyon are dated over millions of years, enabling geologists to study them over time. The rocks found are grouped into three different groups, the Proterozoic group, the Paleozoic group, and the Mesozoic group, ranging from the Vishnu basement rocks, which are about 2 billion years old, to the Kaibab limestone found on the rim which is the youngest layer and about 270 million years old. Let's discuss the evolution of the canyon. The canyon has several layers attributed to years of accumulation, and to see these several canyon layers, sightseers visit and hike the canyon's length. Still, not everyone can do this, so a trail of time was installed to educate visitors on the timeline of the formation of the rocks in the canyon. Understanding the Vishnu schist is critical to understanding the geological history of the Grand Canyon because it represents a critical stage in the formation of the region. It is a metamorphic rock dating about 1.7 billion years ago and formed through a complex process involving the deposition of sedimentary layers consisting primarily of mica, quartz and feldspar. This is followed by tectonic forces subjecting the rocks to immense heat and pressure. It is evidence of ancient environments, tectonic events, and the dynamic processes that shaped the landscape over billions of years. Over this set, also in the Proterozoic group, is the Zoroaster granite. This set of rock formations is estimated to be about 1.6 billion years old. Unlike the Vishnu schist, 
The Zoroastra granite is an igneous rock that originated from the solidification of molten magma and is primarily composed of minerals such as quartz, feldspar, and biotite mica. It originated as a pluton, an intrusive body of magma that solidified underground before being exposed by erosion over millions of years. The granite magma was forced into existing fractures and faults within the Vishnu schist, eventually cooling and solidifying to form the granite pluton. After this layer, the Paleozoic layer, ranging from 525 to 275 million years ago, consists of Tepiad sandstone, Bright Angel Shale, Boave limestone, Redwall limestone, Supine group, and the Torawit formation, which are the youngest sets. They're made of clay deposits, sandstones, and limestones, and it showcases the transition from marine to terrestrial environments. Fresh deposits were later added on top of these about 270 million years ago. The Kaibab limestone, a light-colored rock formation, displaying shades of white, beige, or light gray, forming the uppermost layer. The formation is found on the rim near the lip of the canyon and is predominantly composed of limestone, a sedimentary rock made up mainly of calcium carbonate, calcite, derived from the accumulation of shells and skeletal remains of marine organisms. An interesting fact about the canyon is its weather conditions. The weather in the Grand Canyon varies according to the elevation. Some rims are high enough to receive snowfall in winter, and at the same time, some are not. From the canyon's rim to its lowest point, the temperature can change by more than 25 degrees. The gorge's depths are notoriously hot during the summer, while the north rim is often below freezing in winter, but generally the canyon has dry weather and a semi-arid climate. These gorges formations are not static but continuously evolving due to ongoing geological processes and the influence of the Colorado River's continuous flow. The canyon's colorful and layered walls provide a unique geological record, offering valuable insights into the Earth's history. Yet, they would have remained hidden if not for the accidental discovery by a Francisco Vasquez de Coronado commanded expedition. Captain Garcia Lopez de Cardenas and some other Spanish explorers went on a gold search for the fabled seven cities of gold in 1540 and ended up finding the canyon. However, they couldn't explore it due to the rugged terrain. They were the first Europeans to get there. In 1857, John Strong Newbury, the first geologist to visit the Grand Canyon, referred to the layers as the most splendid exposure of stratified rocks worldwide. As a geologist and explorer, his work involved studying the geological structures and resources of various regions in the American West, including areas adjacent to the Grand Canyon. His research and observations on the geological formations and the Colorado Plateau helped contribute to the overall understanding of the processes that shaped the Grand Canyon. After the canyon's discovery and eventual exploration, President Theodore Roosevelt established the canyon as a games preserve in 1906, and after passing the Antiquities Act of 1906 to law, he redesignated the canyon as the U.S. before President Woodrow Wilson established the National Monument as a U.S. National Park in 1919. The bill to make it a national monument would limit public access to it, and this caused an uproar and debate among citizens. Amid the fracas, the debate caught the attention of a young explorer, G. E. Kincaid. What did Kincaid find on his adventure? Kincaid saw it as a final opportunity to explore, so he journeyed into the canyon depths and took a boat into the Colorado River to document his findings before the ban came into effect. To do this, he gathered a team and equipment to begin his adventure with only one goal in mind to explore the obsolete areas, collect scientific data, and document the canyon's wonders. As expected of uncharted areas, one usually finds other things beside the intended. As Kincaid ventured deeper into the canyon, he encountered more fascinating rock formations, mysterious symbols, and ancient artifacts. The canyon was rich in minerals like gold, silver, and copper, 
and Kincaid wanted to see what more he could find before the canyon closed off. His findings hinted at a hidden history lying unrevealed. This led Kincaid to expand his mission, moving from exploration to discovery. During this expedition, Kincaid made one of the most important finds, a hidden civilization within the Grand Canyon. He came across a trail and abandoned his boat to check it out. He followed the steps until he came across a cavern entrance that looked artificial. He entered the cavern and turned on his flashlight. He saw writings in ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics on the walls that ran far into the distance. On further exploration, it was discovered that in the secluded space where he found the carvings, advanced tools and architectural remnants, his findings would challenge what is already known about the canyon's history. As with most astonishing feats, they spurred their achievers to do more. This discovery fueled Kincaid's determination to discover the Grand Canyon secrets. G.E. Kincaid's discoveries were so unique that his findings preceded him, and before he could get the word out or publish a paper about his findings, word had spread. The scientific community also took note of him, even though most of them did not believe him. Kincaid used unbelief and skepticism as motivation to continue gathering more evidence and developing his theories. He got help from a fellow researcher called S.A. Jordan, and together they made more progressive discoveries that shed light on the ancient civilization that once inhabited the area. As more researchers explored the area, they discovered evidence of food storage and waste disposal, pointing to the fact that it was used for communal dining. Also, remnants of ancient cooking activities like fire pits, hearths, and cooking utensils indicate that people use them for food preparation and cooking. Adding to their already fascinating findings, the tag team of two researchers discovered big rooms within the archaeological site. These rooms stood out due to their unusual size and distinctive features. They were spacious, covered a large area, and contained elaborate architectural details. Out of adventure, King Cade explored the Grand Canyon, and the world is grateful for it today. With the new advancements in science and technology, more expeditions have been embarked on and carried out, all of which have given us insights into the culture and ways of life of an ancient tribe. The canyon's rich history will only be complete if we explore the myths and legends surrounding the gorge. These myths and legends add a sense of mystery and wonder to the already majestic landscape of the Grand Canyon. They're an essential part of the cultural heritage of the Native American tribes that have lived in the region for thousands of years and continue to be passed down through generations. One such tale is the story of the man-eating giants who would capture and devour humans, making travel through the region dangerous. The Paiuti tribe eventually defeated the giants with the help of their gods, driving them out of the area. Another legend stems from the Hopi tribe. They have a creation story involving their ancestors' emergence from the Grand Canyon. According to their beliefs, they emerged from the inner world to the surface through various canyon layers, symbolizing their migration to their present homeland. This made the tribe place great spiritual significance on the site. They believe that upon death, a person passes westward through a place of emergence, upstream from the confluence of the Colorado and Little Colorado rivers in the canyon, on their journey to the afterlife. We should note that the Native American tribes were the first tribes to live in the canyon and its regions before Europeans even found the land. Native Americans are the largest inhabitants of the area. Does this speak of their cultural relationship with the ancient civilization? The Native American tribes who lived in the region attach such spiritual significance to the region. One such tribe is the Havasupai tribe, and they've lived in the high desert land and red rocks of the Grand Canyon for over eight centuries, even before the canyon was designated a national park. The tribe's main settlement is Supai Village, located at the base of the Grand Canyon in Havasu Canyon. The village is only accessible by foot, horseback, or helicopter. Havasu Creek flows through the village, and the area is famous for its stunning blue-green waterfalls. Of all the original Native American tribes, 
the Havasupai are the only ones still living in the region of the canyon to this day. And when the canyon was designated as a national park, it came with many problems for the people of the Havasupai tribe, losing most of their land. A councilwoman in the Havasupai tribe, Ophelia Watahomiji Koles, said they lost a large area of their migration, which they're trying hard to get back, and even on the ones they have, are being treated less than they should be. She believes their ancestral land in the canyon is sacred ground and should be treated as such, pleading with the millions of tourists visiting every year to protect and respect it as the tribe members do. About a thousand years ago, evidence showed that people farmed crops along the bottom of the canyon. They made caves by hollowing out the canyon walls to store their harvested farm produce. Some dug caves still exist at the Grand Canyon today, with an estimated 1,000 caves within the canyon, but only 335 have been recorded with only one open to the public. These provide proof of the tribe's spirituality and belief in the presence of supernatural forces dwelling in the canyon. The tribe members made animal figurines from split twigs, which could be dated to about 4,000 years ago and are still found in the canyon today. At the same time, some believe they were a boredom alleviation, and some believe they were used in rituals and offerings. The symbols and rock arts also serve as an indication of the animals which existed at that time. So, whether for boredom alleviation or ritual purposes, one clear thing is the Havasupai's interconnectedness and interactions with animals. And suppose their rock art is anything to go by. In that case, it showcases various animal representations, such as deer, elk, bighorn, sheep, snakes, birds, and insects, each having deep cultural and symbolic significance through these depictions. Havasupai's reverence for the animal kingdom and their understanding of the interconnectedness between humans and the natural world is evident. In addition to animal representations, their rock arts usually symbolize celestial bodies and expressions, some of which are the sun, moon, and star patterns, putting them at center stage to symbolize the tribe's awareness and observation of the celestial bodies. With these symbols and bodies, they measure seasonal changes, agricultural cycles, and ceremonial practices. From the initial discovery of the canyon until now, various discoveries have been made and are still being made since the gorge is constantly evolving. Share your most intriguing discovery with us in the comment section. Remember to like and subscribe to this page for more.